while contemporary Russian aircraft technology is showcased at the Dubai Air Show in November 2025, the most recent news and photographs regarding fifth-generation fighters have been released. Among these, the most noteworthy is the image of the export Su-57E's cockpit. The cockpit of the Su-57E, Russia's export version of its fifth-generation stealth fighter, provides the most visible insight into the avionics philosophy underlying Moscow's most advanced combat aircraft. The photograph displays a meticulously designed cockpit configuration aimed at integrating classic Russian ergonomic principles with modern Western-style interface design. The outcome is a system that integrates robustness, redundancy, and automation in a manner that is characteristically Russian, while remaining sufficiently modern to rival international fifth-generation platforms. This video provides a comprehensive analysis of the cockpit, investigating its design principles, display technology, control architecture, pilot vehicle interface, and what these components indicate regarding the overarching combat doctrine envisioned for the Su-57E. Let us first look into the design philosophy. In my view, it is balancing modernity with familiarity. A key feature of the Su-57E cockpit is its hybrid design. Russian aerospace engineering has historically prioritized tactile controls, switch-based systems, and mechanically durable interfaces. Simultaneously, the arrival of fifth-generation aircraft requires highly integrated digital environments. The Su-57E thus employs an evolving design approach. A prominent panoramic touchscreen occupies the lower instrument panel, complemented by conventional side consoles equipped with physical switches and rotary controls. This integration underscores Russia's focus on maintaining pilot proficiency and fail-safe functionality while incorporating sensor fusion, artificial intelligence-assisted systems, and automated navigation into the fighter's operational procedures. The ergonomic design appears intentionally utilitarian. Surfaces exhibit a matte finish, colors are muted, and each component appears designed prioritizing functionality over aesthetic appeal. Unlike the streamlined, minimalist cockpit of the F-35 or the extensive use of glass in contemporary Chinese fighters, the Su-57E emphasizes manual redundancy and swift reconfiguration. This aligns with Russian expectations that the aircraft must maintain operational effectiveness even under adverse conditions, such as electromagnetic interference, partial avionics failure, or excessive operational stress. The cockpit's modular design ensures simple and efficient on-site repairs and component replacements. The extensive panoramic multifunction display, dominating the primary instrument panel, is the most prominent feature of the cockpit. It extends nearly across the entire expanse of the pilot's forward field, substituting what would traditionally be multiple smaller displays. Its magnitude indicates a shift toward a more integrated battle space interface, where situational awareness is regarded as a cohesive visual environment rather than a compilation of isolated data segments. The panoramic display seems to endorse multi-window overlays, target tracking symbology, threat vectors, and navigation routes. The perimeter incorporates a series of tactile controls, enabling the pilot to swiftly reconfigure modes without dependence solely on touch input, which may be challenging during high G-forces or turbulence. The curvature and angle of the display are precisely engineered to minimize glare and ensure clear visibility during precipitous maneuvers. In an export version, such as the Su-57E, the panoramic display likely accommodates a degraded yet still sophisticated version of the Urbis E-Fusion suite, integrating radar, infrared search and track, electronic warfare data, and mission management software within a unified visual environment. The size of the display also suggests the possibility of integration with helmet-mounted display systems, enabling the seamless transfer of visual signals between the cockpit and the visor. Above the primary panoramic display, there is a secondary, more compact, multifunction display. This functions as a tactical and systems-oriented display, often used for communications, engine parameters, navigation redundancy, and sensor diagnostics. 
The position shows that it is meant to be used quickly, which means less head movement between primary flight guidance and other important mission information. Encircling the upper display are numerous analog-style rotary knobs and function switches, signifying manual control over brightness, contrast, inactive modes, and emergency overrides. The tangible design of these controls serves as a reminder that Russian cockpit architecture prioritizes robustness. In environments characterized by high-intensity electromagnetic interference, infrared jamming, or partial software disruptions, tactile controls serve as a reliable fail-safe mechanism unaffected by digital impairments. A prominent feature within the cockpit is the central control stick, equipped with a multi-directional cap, triggers, and pressure-sensitive switches. This stick represents Russia's interpretation of a hands-on throttle and stick system, albeit with certain distinctions from Western fighters. Russian sticks generally emphasize missile mode switches, cannon selection, radar management, and engagement authorization functionalities. The design is clear, featuring well-defined finger placements that indicate the potential for swift input without requiring hand repositioning. To the left, the throttle quadrant is partially observable. It seems to include several detents for afterburner staging and presumably accommodates the Su-57's distinctive supercruise-enabled thrust management system. Russian throttle modules frequently incorporate specialized controls for radar emission management, electronic countermeasures activation, and glide path modifications, enabling the pilot to concentrate on maneuvering. The inclusion of both contemporary hands-on throttle and stick capabilities and manual fallback controls underscores the cockpit's layered approach to operational safety and functionality. The ejection handle of the K36D5 seat, encircled by a red ring, is prominently displayed within the cockpit. Russia's K36 family is broadly recognized as one of the safest high-altitude, high-speed ejection systems in the world. The exposed dual-handle design emphasizes the importance of swift, intuitive operation in emergency situations. The seat harness and cushions provide support for prolonged missions, featuring ergonomic contours designed to aid pilots during extended high-G maneuvers. The cockpit configuration guarantees that the ejection sequence remains unobstructed by the adjacent avionics. Components are positioned either recessed or angled to avoid obstruction. This detail illustrates the Russian approach of incorporating survivability features directly into cockpit design rather than considering them as ancillary factors. The left side console is equipped with numerous switches, dials, and toggles. These are conventionally linked to electrical power distribution, fuel routing logic, environmental control, avionics initialization procedures, and landing gear systems. The existence of tangible switches signifies Russia's continued preference for preserving pilot-operated control over key systems. Although the Su-57 integrates automation and fault detection software, the pilot maintains final authority over numerous critical functions, consistent with Russian doctrine that prioritizes battlefield adaptability. The right console features smaller displays and auxiliary screens, presumably designated for navigation, weapons status, countermeasures, and communications. The lower right display presents what seems to be a synthetic vision or radar-generated terrain map, suggesting that the Su-57's avionic system incorporates terrain following and terrain avoidance functionalities. This capability is vital for low-altitude penetration missions which are among the primary duties for the aircraft. The canopy structure is discernible in the photograph, exhibiting a faceted design that meets the requirements for a reduced radar cross-section. However, in contrast to the bubble canopies of Western air superiority fighters, the canopy design of the Su-57 emphasizes structural integrity and radar transparency optimization rather than providing an unobstructed upward view. This selection corresponds with the Su-57's multi-role emphasis, prioritizing stealth, ground attack capabilities, and survivability over mere dogfighting visibility. Nevertheless, 
the forward visibility from the cockpit appears to be superb. The orientation of the instrument panel, together with a comparatively low glare shield, affords the pilot a broad field of view ahead. This is essential for high angle of attack maneuvering, a primary advantage of the Su-57 platform. The cockpit design indicates that the Su-57E is engineered to attract export clients who desire fifth generation capabilities while favoring a more conventional aviation interface. Nations transitioning from MiG-29 or Su-30 families will find the Su-57E cockpit sufficiently familiar to minimize training requirements while providing a significant enhancement in digital capabilities. The integration of touchscreen interfaces, analog redundancy, and physical controls characterizes the aircraft as a hybrid platform that bridges fourth and fifth generation operational paradigms. The panoramic display and automated sensor fusion indicate preparedness for modern network-centric warfare. Meanwhile, Manual systems and comprehensive controls underscore that the Su-57E is designed to maintain operational effectiveness in environments where satellite navigation or data link access may be compromised. This dual philosophy approach improves the platform's export potential by appealing to military organizations anticipating operations in contested electromagnetic environments. In conclusion, the cockpit is a synthesis of tradition and innovation. The Su-57E cockpit exemplifies Russia's effort to redefine its fighter interface philosophy while preserving the core principles that have characterized earlier generations of Russian aircraft. It exemplifies a conscious equilibrium between digital advancement and mechanical dependability, between contemporary sensor integration and conventional pilot control, and between export appeal and durable battlefield performance. The panoramic display, hands-on throttle and stick integration, and survivability features exemplify Russia's dedication to fifth-generation design, while the physical switches and subsystem clusters maintain the adaptability and resilience characteristic of Russian fighters. In essence, the Su-57E cockpit functions not just as a pilot's workstation, but as a reflection of Russia's overarching strategic objectives, to deploy a stealth fighter that integrates advanced avionics with the robust practicality necessary for operational combat situations. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us